Hey, what is up, freaky people? My name is Abby. My artist's name is Ropesia. This is a podcast, vlog, whatever you want to call it, uh, where I just share what I do. Creatively, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, so today I have some finished objects almost sort of some like kind of cheaty finished objects whatever they're finished they're done we're going to talk about them i also have some works in progress i have some painting updates to go through with you let's see here we go i wrote it down so that I can try to be a little bit more professional and act like I know what I'm doing. And like I have any amount of forethought <laughs> for these videos, I do. <laughs> it doesn't look like it, but I most certainly do. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go through, I think, knitting and then sewing and then I'll do an update on the paintings back there. So we did go to the Bridgeport Art Center for the opening for the group show that I was in. Um, and I saw a few other paintings and I think they're all paintings. There were, there were like some sculptures. Um, it's not that I dislike sculpture. I just don't get like a whole lot out of it. Sometimes, sometimes I do. Sometimes I think a sculpture is really great, um, but I'm just not like, not super drawn to 3D art, although I really love 4D art, like installation art, sort of. I don't know, it depends, it depends. <laughs> Cause that's a really wide range of like different pieces of art. And some of them I think are really stupid and some of them I'm like, oh, this is great. Um, so yeah, 4D, I do tend to gravitate to more than 3D. But I took some pictures of the paintings that I liked and the artist's names and it was just for me so that I could like look them up later and see if they had a website or an Instagram or whatever. Um, but I thought, hey, I have these pictures, which are not good pictures, so <laughs> sorry about that. But I figured I would share those with you, the ones that I liked, and then I'll add the artist's name in the description or on the screen or whatever so that you can go and look at them if you'd like and i'm pretty sure to qualify for the call you had to live within like a certain distance of the city of chicago so i'm fairly certain these are all local artists so here are those So yeah, those are the paintings that I liked. And now I'm gonna get into knitting. First, I guess, since I'm wearing it, since you can already see it, we'll start with the finished object. Uh, this was supposed to be camisole number four. That was a full camisole, obviously. I made at least three mistakes which I was hoping would happen under the bust, but I was like not understanding how this was all going to fit since it's the first garment I've ever knit. Um, and it happened like right across my nipple. <laughs> so yeah, I thought about ripping it out. I had put in a lifeline before I joined in the round and I decided that it didn't matter and I was just gonna keep going because this hurt my hands so bad to knit. So this yarn is a linen cotton blend. It's 
Lindy Chain by Knit Picks or crochet.com, whatever it's your, um, in the color blush. And I do love the yarn. I do think it's fantastic. I do totally recommend it. I love how it feels. It doesn't have like any give <laughs> when you're knitting with it, even though it's like a chain construction. So it kind of like does move, but it's not, it's not stretchy in any way. So yeah, doing that. And I also had to use metal needles because I thought that I should go down a needle size to get gauge and like that's a whole thing that I'll talk about in just a second. <laughs> uh, yeah, I learned a lot. I learned a lot making this, but it is not a top, it's a bra. I'm gonna just wear it under a shirt, um, but it fits really well. So I like that. And you can see, let me do this. Yeah, sort of, can you see that? Yeah, so you can see here, that's where I joined in the round. This, this is where I joined in the round. Um, and I did it wrong. <laughs> I didn't do the ribbing right because I got confused. And then there's like a couple rows down here where I, I don't know, I, I feel like I was using a, a row counter, but I still got lost somehow. <laughs> Cause I'm like, eh, pathetic. But yeah, so it's, it's comfortable. It's great. It's, it has like really great stitch definition. Camisole number four, my favorite things, knitwear. I made this little bra. It's cute. It's, uh, it's comfy. I use Lindy Chain blush. 70% linen, 30% cotton. And I do intend to knit this full pattern or this, this full shirt. At some point, I just needed to cast this off. It was like weighing on my mind way too much and it was stopping me from doing other things. So. So I took it off my needles. I, I'm glad that I did because I think it would have had too much negative ease and I wouldn't have liked it as a camisole anyway. And then it also would have had these mistakes, which I wouldn't have liked, which is like, these mistakes were what made me decide to cast it off. Cause I was just like sitting there looking at it after I knit around and I was like, yeah, I'm not going to be able to live with that and now I can see where it's going to sit on my body and so I'm just going to stop, I'm going to finish it. I did the I-cord straps the first time that I've done I-cord. Um, it's a little sloppy <laughs> at the beginning and the end. I had an issue with my provisional cast on. I think one of the, one of the stitches like broke or something. Uh, but it didn't matter that much. It was fine. And I just don't like kitchenering <laughs> at all. So that's why I decided the toe up socks were probably going to be the thing for me. Because I found out about Judy's magic cast on. Um, which brings us to our second finished object which I'm super proud of, proud of. It's a pair of socks that I made for Ian. And yes, they are two very different colors <laughs> because they're two different skeins of yarn. I didn't, uh, I probably should have just done them both with this skein, but I didn't think about it. And I really didn't think that they were gonna be that different in color. They are. Good Lord, are they ever. This is much lighter. There's like actual, maybe white in there, but whatever, it's fine. It's the first pair of socks I made. They're for Ian. They do fit him. I have some things to say. Oh, but first I knit this on size two Knit picks 
interchangeable lace needles. They're metal. I bought the lace kit because I bought the lace kit because I like interchangeable needles and I had the Sunstruck wooden um, interchangeable needles from Knit Picks and I like those. Um, the join's great. The only complaint I have is that there's too much memory in the cord and like it's not that big of a deal for like a budget friendly needle set. And it was the first needle set that I bought so I was like absolutely not gonna buy, <laughs> spend a bunch of money uh, in case I just like decided nope I'm really really not a knitter. Just can't be a knitter. But I also didn't want to like keep buying single needles, like um, one size needles, I don't know, fixed needles, that's what they're called. Because like I know like you buy more than like two and then you're like wow I've got a lot of circular needles and I have nowhere to put them and, and I knew that sometimes that I would get in the mood to like knit something else and I might need the same needle size and blah 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 blah. So, whatever. Big ramble about nothing. I used the lace knit picks, interchangeable needles for this. I also used those to start to knit this sock. And discovered that the join for those specifically is terrible. <laughs> I had to change the cord for this sock because the one that I was using just got completely destroyed and like it kept snagging on the sock when I would push it up to reset my magic loop and everything. So that was annoying. I had to throw that away and I put on another one because it did come with two longer um, cords. And then I bought a set of chow goos, not a set, a pair. Yeah, a pair. <laughs> I bought a chow goo, yeah, we're gonna say a pair. I bought a pair of chow goo circular needles in the same size to knit this. And I know I don't like metal needles. This is a fact. I was going to buy the bamboo chow goo circular needles, but the cord for some reason has this little bobble like by the joint and I was like, why would you do that? I, nobody wants that. Who wants that? You're going to have to get your stitches over that and like, mm -mm. so yeah, so I bought the metal ones. If you like metal needles, I'm sure they're fine, but my stitches just like jump off my needles. If Even if I'm using wood needles, they jump off sometimes, but like especially with metal needles, it drives me nuts. <laughs> and that happened plenty of times while I was knitting these socks. It happened plenty of times while I was knitting this. I didn't realize at the time that Luca needles are wood. So I am gonna get, I think, probably another <laughs> fixed circular set in the same size. And they're pink. They're pink wood needles, so like, ooh, isn't that exciting? So yeah, I'm gonna do that. I might get them before I cast on my next pair of socks. I don't know. I do have a couple things that I need to work on before I start knitting anything for myself. But they're easy things, they're quick things, it's fine. <sighs> so, these socks were the Very Pink Knits, I can't remember what her name is on Ravelry, but she's Very Pink Knits on YouTube. Uh, but these were, she did like a sock series with like different toes and heels and stuff. This was the J 
Judy's Magic Cast on Toe with a German short row heel. Not that you can see what I'm talking about. I picked these because I wanted to do the Judy's Magic Cast on because I didn't want to deal with a Kitchener stitch and it looks great. I think on both of them basically. Maybe like maybe a little nibble knob but I'll try to show you. That's like you can't see at all. I think right here is the cast on and like you really can't see it or tell at all and you can't feel it on your foot there's one little nibble knob right here which is probably where my tail was that's where it started but they're great I love that cast on it's amazing so you do that and then you just increase down for your wedge toe and you knit a tube up to your heel and then you work your German short row heel which I explained to you before I had some trouble with but I did figure it out I did these both one after another since I did have the two needles I decided to do it that way this one is horrendous <laughs> like ooh. Of those holes. It's much better on the other side, actually. So I don't know. I might have dropped a stitch or done something stupid on the other side that I can't remember. This heel is, again, better on one side than it is on the other. But that's like probably what it's supposed to be. But I don't like that because it's still holy. So I looked up how to fix that and uh, Modern Daily Knitting has a blog post called, I think, Gapping and Mapping. I can't remember who wrote it. I'll put a link to it. But they describe how to fix that while you're, or how to avoid that while you're knitting the heel in the first place. Because I do like the German short row heel. I don't want to do a different heel. I don't want to have to pick up stitches for a heel. I hate picking up stitches. I'm really bad at it. I can always, I can usually do it like fine on the one side, but then the other side I can't. And it ends up like a little lumpy and I don't want anything lumpy inside my shoes or on my socks. So these are not perfect, but they are finished. They are wearable. This is a little tail because I haven't blocked this one yet. I gotta wash it and then I'll cut off my ends. So when I do my sock, my, my pair of socks, I'll try the modern daily knitting thing and see if that works. So then for the cuffs, the first one I did, I was intending on doing Jenny's super stretchy bind off. And then I was reading about it and some people were like, oh, it flares. And I was like, oh, well, I mean, if I don't, if you're wearing it, of course it doesn't matter that the sock flares. But if you're looking at it, like you just washed your socks and you're folding them and you're like, oh, look at this pretty thing that I made. And then it's like flared out. Like, I think that might make you feel a little sad. So I was like, okay, well, I'll try to avoid that. Um, one second, who is it? So for this one, I found Sheena's stretchy sock bind off without flare on YouTube. And it's not that it's not stretchy. Like it is stretchy. And it does not flare. It looks really nice when it's not on the foot. However, it's not that stretchy. So on the second one, I just did Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off, which looks terrible. <laughs> it 
And part of that is me just not being good at, at binding off in rib. Um, but yeah, that one does not look as nice as this one, in my opinion. And Ian says that they both stretch roughly the same. I'll try. I'll stretch. I'll see. Yeah. I don't think there's a huge difference in the amount of stretch. So I guess I would go with Sheena's stretchy sock bind off without flare. But next time I make Ian a pair of socks, I'm going to increase probably, I don't know, I, I'm probably going to test it and knit like um, just a cuff swatch for him and see, see how many stitches you need to go around like the calf, wherever, wherever his socks normally hit. And then that's how many stitches I will increase from when I finish the heel, when I'm going into the leg. Because he has a problem with getting them over his heel in the first place. So I think increasing will we'll hopefully fix that. Because um, I don't want him to, <laughs> to like have to, I don't know. It just doesn't look com comfortable for him when he's trying to like put them on or take them off. It's like, it's a struggle. And I don't want it to be a struggle. At all. That's the sock saga part one <laughs> completed. I am not going to start knitting another pair of socks for a minute now. That's enough. So next knitting project is this scarf. Ew. Is this scarf that I'm knitting for my friend Sharon. Sorry, that's loud. And this is it. This is all that I've started. It's just a little. I feel like it's too wide. but it was like too skinny. I'm gonna keep it. I don't care. It's gonna be a wide scarf, that's fine. So this is Knit Picks Swish DK in eggplant. And it's super wash. And I already knit her this scarf with this yarn last winter. And at the time, I didn't realize how important blocking was, especially for superwash yarns, because I knew that they grew, but I was like, how much can it grow? They can grow a lot. <laughs> and so you add that to the fact that I was knitting super, super loose at the time, and I like didn't know it. Like I knew that I had knit this scarf loose but I didn't understand how much it was gonna grow. So I thought, oh, if it's a little bit more open, that's fine, Sharon's not gonna care. She's like, she's a hot person. So she doesn't need a super warm scarf, like I might. But yeah, so it was, it was way too open. I gave it to her anyway. I didn't block it. I realized my mistake once I knit her Beyonce's scarf. And I did block that <laughs> and that had also been knit loose, but I didn't know it. So it looked, it looked totally normal. It looked like nice and plump um, when I was knitting it and it was like a good length and then I blocked it and it just like poof, grew and like it rode out. It, was, it looked so, it doesn't look terrible. <laughs> it is wearable. It's way too long, but she's really tall, so that's fine. Hopefully, hopefully you wear it, Christy. I love you. She 
she like she put it on and she was just like had I don't know a foot <laughs> of, of scarf on either side of her neck it was it's really long but that's that I learned I learned my lesson so I told Sharon do not wash that scarf give it back to me I'll rip it out I'll re-knit it for you so I'm trying to do that before it like actually gets cold And it shouldn't be hard because it I was going I was gonna redo it with the best friend scarf pattern, but I started knitting that for myself because I was gonna knit two for us to match, and I did not like knitting the pattern. I hated it. I will probably never be a lace knitter, even though I love lace. <laughs> maybe, maybe someday. We'll see, we'll see. You never, you never know. I mean, hell, what's, what's something that I like now that I never liked before? I mean, there's plenty of things. The thing that comes to mind is like vegetables. <laughs> like Brussels sprouts and broccoli. Didn't really like those when I was a kid or anything, but now I do. So the only thing that's gonna make that scarf take a long time is that it's on size oh, five needles. <laughs> and I'm, I'm a little concerned that the size five needles are even too big for like how loose I knit. But, yeah, whatever. It's, it's gonna get done, it's gonna be fine. She's gonna love it. Then we have, this is the thing that I'm probably gonna finish first. This is a hat that I'm knitting for Ian and it's just a ribbed hat. Um, I'm using this pattern. I think it's called the Watchman hat on Ravelry. And I'm not gonna show you the picture. <laughs> They've got guns in the picture because it's, it's for soldiers. But it's just a really great basic ribbed hat pattern. This is knit in Knit Picks, Wool of the Andes, not the Superwash, just the regular, in the color Briar Heather, I believe, which is just like a really dark kind of mottled gray color. And again, that's good stitch definition. It's really, it's pretty wooly. Like it's, it's got some tooth to it. And this is the second time that I've knit this hat. I finished this hat the first time. I don't know, probably in March or something when it was like still cold, but it was starting to not be super cold. And Ian wore it all of like maybe two times when he went to work and they had an office party and some drunk woman stole it. He tried to get it back from her that day, many days after, many months after he tried to get that hat back from her. <sighs> yeah, so I have to re-knit the hat for him because I wanted him to have that damn hat. <laughs> And it's not his fault. He did not lose it. She 100% she took it from him. Um, yeah, because people are rude and nasty sometimes, especially when they're drunk. <sighs> so I'm re knitting this hat. I have, I don't know, this is probably third of the skein left for the first first skein and I'm gonna use a whole two skeins this time last time I knit it to the pattern specifications so they just said knit it this length and then start decreasing for the crown so this time I'm gonna knit it longer because he wasn't able to fold it up over his ears 
which I didn't really think would matter because he doesn't have any ha other hats that fold up over his ears. And so I, and I think I asked him about it and he was like, yeah, no, I don't think so. I think I'd rather just like, boop, go on. But he changed his mind after I made it and he was like, yeah, no, actually if it folded up, that would probably be pretty nice. So I'm gonna use a full two skeins. I think I used like a skein and a half, maybe a skein and two thirds for the last one. So I'm gonna knit it until I know it can be folded and go over his giant head. <laughs> and then, yeah, I'll have that hat back. And I can move on with my life and stop re-knitting things that I've already knit. <sighs> Sorry about this. Someday I will get a better microphone. Not today. Today we have the cheap one. Anyway, so I finally finished this pair of pants. They, if you recall, um, I talked about them probably like the very beginning, in like the first episode. Um, they're cotton, they're drawstring. There's no uh, elastic in the waistband because I don't want plastic in my clothes if I can help it. Drawstrings are just fine with me. I think they're perfectly comfortable. It has side seam pockets. They're a little too wide-legged, I think. I don't know. They do they do look pretty good because I have like wide hips. So <laughs> they kind of just go straight down from my hips, which isn't like the worst. But they're low rise and I don't know how I feel about low rise clothing right now. Like I've worn both high and low rise for my entire adult life. Um, it just sort of depends, but I don't know. Um, but the pattern, it was, I'll have to look it up. It was probably a new look pattern. It was just something really basic. And I had lost the back pattern piece. So I just used the front pattern piece and I didn't do anything to accommodate for the butt. <laughs> and I have, I have a butt. Most people do. Mine is... You know, it's there. It's not, it's not insignificant. So they're not uncomfortable. They feel okay. They look okay. And yeah, but in future, I would obviously accommodate <laughs> for that. Um, so they might just be pajama pants. I don't know. They look kind of like pajama pants, but that's like, they're striped. Um, let's try putting them on with like a shirt. Yeah, so anyway, this is a sweatshirt and so it makes it look very much like pajama pants, but they're comfy. They fit, they're breathable, they're stretchy. They are, uh, they're pretty good. I think I like them. They're done. They were, entirely handsome so that's cool that was an experience finally just finished the hems and i sewed down the pockets and i sewed the ends of the drawstrings down so they wouldn't fray yeah i don't know they're growing on me we'll see i haven't really worn them yet yeah anywho's the rest of the sewing things that i've worked on Okay, so I did fix the hole in the shirt, which I'm real proud of myself for doing. Where is it? There it is. <laughs> That's a good sign, right? So that, let's see if you can see. This right here. I'm trying to get you to see it. I don't know if you can at all. That's where I fixed that tiny little pin prick hole. And it looks fine. It just looks like a little rumpled if you look at it up close. 
so it's super not noticeable and I'm happy that I did it. Now I can and do continue to wear this shirt and it looks great. So that's some mending. The other thing that I did end up mending is this pair of shorts, which I don't think I showed you last time because I didn't realize that this button was falling off. Isn't it pretty? It's like a mother of pearl shell kind of button. These are silk shorts. They're super comfy. They are lovely. And I just sewed the button back on with some pink silk thread. It's just like the Guterman silk thread that you can get at Joann's. And now I can wear them again and the button won't fall off. And that is all of the sewing that I have to show you. I did not do anything else that I had planned on doing. <sighs> For several reasons. Mostly because my sewing machine is still broken. <laughs> I haven't had the bandwidth to fix it. I do have new needles, so we're on the right track. I have the tools to try to fix it. Hopefully it is just a bent needle and like a timing issue and I didn't bend something that really would be a problem. We'll see. I don't know when I'm gonna do that. I have not felt like fixing it because I don't like fixing things. <laughs> That's like, I mean like clothes, mending is fine. I think that counts as sewing because it's not always about sewing brand new things. It's about fixing the things that you have that need to be fixed. <sighs> that being said, that was like my entire plan last month was to fix several items of clothing that I already had so that I would wear them. And then I didn't because I wanted to use my sewing machine and my sewing machine was broken and I don't feel like don't feel like fixing the sewing machine. And I don't know when I'm going to. <clears throat> Sorry, I am just losing my voice like crazy today. It's awful. <laughs> it's as awful as it sounds. Things get done when they get done. This is not like a race. It's not necessary. I obviously have clothing that I can wear, so it's not like I need to get certain things done in a certain time frame. This is not supposed to be stressful. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll fix it when I fix it. Now we've got some paintings. This one is still in the process of, I'm still in the process of painting the ground for this one. I'm just like not into it. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. I just feel like it's n nothing that I do is working out the way that I want it to. And it's not. I feel like nothing I do is working out. I feel like it doesn't have enough detail. I feel like, oh, I don't know. It's just a ground, like how hard should the ground be? But for whatever reason, and I'll show you the next one too, that's also just a ground. I'm just having trouble with grounds right now. I don't know. I think I'm just not interested in doing them. Like maybe I want to work on something else and that's the problem. And this one has like no time constraint. So if I want to like put it down and not look at it for a while, I could totally do that. And that might be what I do. I might hide it behind some things and like work on some other things. Because yeah, I haven't done very much to it since you've last seen it. I've just added some more. So that's that. I'm going to stop making a look at it now. This is another ground that I'm working on that I am struggling with. <laughs> 
I don't know why. I don't know why I'm struggling so hard. <sighs> but it's gonna be fine. It's gonna work out. I just need to like, just needs more depth. So it needs more layers and <sighs> there's no shortcut for that. And I don't know, sometimes I'm just not in the mood to like sit there and just apply color. Sometimes I wanna like actually, you know, do some drawing, <laughs> whatever. Um, I say that, I say that very loosely because as I have tried to express before, I want the painting to paint itself. I want it to be involved as little as possible. So yeah, this is gonna be a portrait of my two friends who are getting married. It's gonna be a wedding present for them. They get married in, at the end of September. So I have some time. So that's, that's part of why the uh, one for Ian might go on the back burner because I don't wanna to have to ship this and they live in Ohio, so. I just want to bring it with me to their wedding and give it to the men <laughs> and not have to worry about shipping it or worry about like when I'm going to see them next or whatever. So I do want to get this finished. I love the colors. I think they're probably going to love the colors. <sighs> It'll be the first time I've done a portrait with two people. My friend sent me a couple pictures of them together, not knowing why I had asked for that those pictures, although she knows I paint, she knows I'm an artist, so. And um, I've absolutely, <laughs> I've absolutely made art of her using her image before. So she probably knows that that's what it's for. But they're two very different pictures. They're two not great pictures to paint from. So I don't really know how this is gonna turn out. We'll see. First things first, I have to finish this stupid ground. <sighs> Which I will. Which I will. It'll be fine. And then we have her again. So, I made some progress. I wiped away the eye area with um, rubbing alcohol and water. And like it, I unearthed her eyes a little bit. And then I tried to like go over them again to like, you know, um, merge them, blend them with the rest of the face. But then I realized, oh, well the problem with the face to begin with is just that it's too dark. It needs to be much lighter. So I'm just gonna have to go back in and let go. I'm just gonna have to let go and let, let whatever happens, happens. <sighs> it's gonna be fine. I'm probably gonna fix the hair a little bit because I did use like a fan brush to try to give like more of a hair texture instead of just the drips and like, I don't like it. There's like some, some drawing that's fine, but I really don't, don't like the fan brush specifically. But the eyes are closer to what I want them to be. And I just need to sit down with some gesso <laughs> and lighten up that face and then watercolor over it some more. And yeah, she's still in the process of being fixed, but I have hope that she can be fixed. Last we have this one which I don't think is finished. Yeah, so this is the ground that I showed you before where it had like the little spermies on it. And you can still see those a little bit. I decided to use this to replace a picture that I had painted that Ian liked and then I destroyed <laughs> in a fit of anger because, you know, sometimes that happens. And I was like, at first I was like, oh, I'll sew it back together. And like, no, I don't want to do that. So I threw it away. I wrote 
the same thing on this one and I don't think it's done because I think you can still see the words too much. Um, so I need to obscure them a little bit more and add more layers because it seems kind of flat right now. Certain parts are like really nice, but overall it's just too flat. So it's almost done. It's not quite done. Uh, it's also just like, I don't know, it's not really anything, it's, it's not my style necessarily, but I just wanted to experiment, and so this is the experiment. All right, so thanks for watching yet again. Thanks for looking at all my stuff. Still don't know how to say goodbye to you. I will work on that. Maybe it'll just pop into my head someday. Hopefully I'll have some things to show you that are finished next time. I'll see you later.